Hey, SAS class, we're going to look at the history of the frequency distribution example that is in uh, the, the PowerPoint this week. So I got the data here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two columns. One of them I'm going to call the lower, uh, the, the lower class limits, and I'm going to make the other one called the upper class limit. All right, in this example, they gave us the class limits, so they wanted this first class to start at 50,000. All right, and then we go up by 5,000. That's what we call the class width. So the class width is what we add to each lower class limit to get the next lower class limit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type equals, click on that previous lower class limit, and type in plus 5,000. I'm going to go back into that previous class and drag it down. Now we want seven classes. That's two so far. Three, four, five, six, seven. And stop. Okay, the first upper class limit was one less than this, so it's going to be 54,999. And then the same thing, I'm going to click equals the class above it plus the width. So we add the same width to go through the lower classes uh, limits and the upper class limits. Now the next column we're going to make is the frequency column. And frequency is just how often something in the data over here in column A um, occurred in between these two numbers. And the way we're going to do that is the count if feature. So count if, and you can just click on it down here, and we want to tell it where is the data. The data is in column A. So count these numbers if, and then we're going to give a comma and then give it the condition. So we have to put these in quotes. So start the quote, and we want to say it's this is the first number that allows us to get into the class. So anything greater than or equal to, so greater than, and then you type equal. So greater than or equal to, you got to end the quote, and you have to use this amper stamp, which is the shift to the 7 key, but it looks like the word and. All right, greater than or equal to what, and I'm just going to click that class, lower class limit. So it's bigger than that. All right, and then I'm going to take away minus count if, open parentheses, same thing, the thing that's in this column comma is now just strictly greater than, don't put the or equal to, an anchor stamp, and then the upper class limit. So if you look at what's happening here, we're counting anything that's bigger than this first number. Well, that's all these numbers are bigger than this first number. But then we only want these, you know, anything between these two, so we take away minus anything that's greater than this number. And anything that's greater than this number is in this class or above, so it takes all that away, and it leaves us with the stuff that's between the two. And that's how we get the frequency in each class. Now, once again, we have a formula in here. So anything that is, um, you know, not the column, when I drag down, it's going to go down through here, and it's going to do anything between these two, anything between these two. So I'm going to click back into the cell, click on the little blue corner down there, and just drag down to the end. So there's my frequency column. Now, I've got it highlighted. So that's a good thing because the next thing we want is the relative frequency column. And I get that from uh, dividing these frequencies by the total. The total I can get from adding these up. And the sum button will add up anything you've selected. So I've selected everything in the frequency column. I click sum. Notice it puts a little sum formula down there below all that. I hit enter. So that number right there is the total of all the frequency column. That's how many numbers we have over here. All right, now I'm going to make a new column called relative frequency. And relative frequency is frequency divided by the total. So I'm going to type this equals, click on the frequency that's right beside it, and then divide it by the total. The total is 25, so I'm just going to type 25 in there. All right, I'm going to drag down and get all those frequencies. I could also have, let me delete these just real quick. Um, oftentimes we see relative frequency written as a percent. So if I wanted to do that, I could do this divided by the 25 and then multiply times 100. And now it's in percentages and these are percents. Oh, sorry. I clicked on the 25 that time. If you click on the 25, you've got to do um, right here where this D9 is. That's where the 25 was that I clicked. If you click on a number and that's what you want to divide by every time, you have to lock it in. Uh, usually F4 on a keyboard will lock it in. You can see these dollar signs go around the D, uh, in front of the D and in front of the 9. That locks in that cell. And then when you drag down, it doesn't try to change the number. So you can avoid that by locking it in. 
or you can do it like we did the first time. You can um, just type in 25 right there rather than clicking the 25, and that will avoid the dragging that takes place. All right, and then the last thing that they uh, will ask for uh, often is a cumulative cumulative frequency column. The easy way to do this here is to take advantage of the sum feature. Um, this is how I do it. So I just, in this cell, I'm going to type in equals, start writing the word sum, open parentheses, and it wants to know if you just click on the little question mark, sum of, of what values are you wanting to sum here. So I'm going to tell it to sum, I'm going to start with the, this first thing in the frequency column, and I'm going to lock it in, again using that F4 key, or putting the dollar signs around there manually, and then do the colon button. And then it wants to know sum from what to what. And I'm going to click that 3 again. I'm going to type it in. Apparently it doesn't like me clicking it twice. I'm going to type it in. It's D2. And this time I'm not going to lock it in. So what happens is I'll, I'll let it, it lets me start at the 3. And that 3 doesn't change where I'm starting from. But the one, the second one does change. When I drag down it goes to that 0. And then the 6. And then the 4. And it will, when I go back in and drag, it will add, you can see from the... Uh, starting cell down to where I tell it to stop. So that's the easy way in my opinion to do the cumulative frequency column, but this bottom number should match the sum of your frequency. All right, so there is the frequency distribution example in um, the, the, this example from this homework.